NAN lets you create an automation workflow using a nice GUI. It has a super easy integration so you can easily store and fetch data throughout your workflow. I want to walk you through how to use the Superbase database and storage with NAN to build a workflow that generates a social media content using AI. Let's dive in. So let me explain the workflow that we'll be creating today. And then once I'm done, we can start from scratch. So the trigger is simple. It's going to trigger every single day, once a day. And it's going to kick off a process to OpenAI, asking OpenAI to basically generate a nice, engaging Twitter content that's loosely related to Postgres. And it's also going to ask it to generate a prompt to generate an image, so image prompt. Once we have that, we're going to take that prompt and uh, again, call the OpenAI API to then generate an image. And then we're going to upload the file, the image file, to Superbase Storage. Now, the reason why I'm using this S3 bucket upload action instead of a standard Superbase action is because the standard Superbase action, we have Superbase and Superbase Vector Store. But this Superbase action is only for database actions. It cannot do anything with Superbase storage. But since Superbase storage is S3 compatible, you can just use a standard S3 upload action and upload your image to Superbase storage. More on this later on. But then at the end, we are inserting that data into our Superbase database. So nothing too fancy. Essentially, you are creating a social media content uh, and uploading all the data to Superbase. Now, from here on, we can maybe automate, you know, posting it to different social media. We can maybe add a human in the loop to kind of approve some of these content. But I wanted to keep the content nice and lean so that it's focused on um, NAN and using Superbase with NAN. So let's start out with a fresh project. I'm going to create a new workflow in my personal workspace. Now, you might be tempted to just pressing this plus icon and get started. But actually, there's a better way. And the better way is to talk to AI to create your workflow. NAN does have a nice agent that you can just talk to and ask it to build all the workflows which works great. But also, if you're like me, um, if you worry about these AI credits and if you're using NAN a lot, you can just go to any AI agent, ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, whatever it is, and ask it to create a NAN workflow in a JSON format. What you can do is once you have that JSON format workflow, you can just copy that paste it into NAN, and it's just going to work. I mean, you, you probably have to adjust some minor details here and there, but the majority of the work is done for you. Let's jump in. I want to create a workflow that generates a social media content using NAN and Superbase. The basic steps are it kicks off the workflow once a day, and then it goes to OpenAI to generate a engaging social media post content for Twitter about Postgres. Now, this content should go with an image, and the image should be a nice looking screenshot of a helpful code snippet. So the Twitter content should be a helpful Postgres tip, and the image is a code snippet that supports the claim of the tweet. Generate the image prompt as well as the main Twitter uh, text from this OpenAI step. After that, call the OpenAI API to generate the image using the image prompt. And then it'll upload the image that it generated to Superbase Storage. But because there are no Superbase Storage action in NAN, use the S3 upload action. Once the image is uploaded, insert all the data into a Superbase database. Also, provide me the SQL snippet to create the table for the Superbase database. Generate a 
JSON format of the NAN workflow so that I can just copy and paste it into my NAN workspace. All right, that should be good. So this is pretty neat, right? It's constructing this JSON format workflow and we can literally and literally just copy and paste this into NAN and it'll, I mean, it's probably not gonna work the way it is, but it'll scaffold the basic workflow that we need. All right, so we have the nice NAN JSON code as well as some steps to configure it in Subis. And I also wanna take a look at this SQL code. So social media post table, and we're gonna store the tweet, text, image prompt, image URL, image file name. Seems redundant, but it's all right. Um, social media post status, this, that, updated column. That's all, honestly, I'm probably just gonna use the create table statement uh, and kind of ignore everything else. So we can just literally take this, hit copy, come in here and hit command V. Boom, there you go. So we have this nice workflow. So the trigger is just a standard trigger. It triggers it every 24 hours, nothing too special going on here, looks good. Now, the first OpenAI step, this is generating the nice tweet about something about Postgres and a bunch of image prompts and whatnot. We can use a different model we can keep it the same, GPT 5.1, 5.2. Yeah, we can just keep it as GPT 5.1. And then here we go. We have the system prompts right here. You are a Postgres expert and social media content creator. You create engaging content, blah, 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 about always respond with a valid JSON, no markdown for, um, and we have to make sure this output content as JSON is selected. It is selected by default right here, which is great. So, great, we have a tweet, text, speed up, slow count, queries, blah, 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 image prompt that goes with it. And tip category, sure. Uh, code snippet, sure. It seems like we have all the information that we want. So that's great. So far, so good. Now, a few times when I tried it, it adds this uh, parse open AI response action in between. We don't really need that because it's already a nice structured JSON output. So I'm just gonna delete that and then go to the next action which generates the image. In here, we can take this, so we can delete everything in this prompt and take this image prompt right here which essentially passes all the prompt that, um, you know, the early open AI action created. We can also tweak the dimensions if we want to. I'm just gonna go with the lower resolution just because we're kind of playing around here. Um, I'm just gonna change the model to GPT image one and let's try it out. Now generating image uh, will take some time, so be patient. All right, it seems like the image has been generated. We can view the generated image and it looks all right. We can always come back and fix the small details, but yeah, I like it so far. Now, from here, we actually don't need to download the image. We actually don't need to prepare and upload, whatever that step is. We can just go into uploading it to S3 or our Super B storage bucket. First, we have to configure our S3 credentials. So I'm just gonna create a new S3 credentials to connect it to my fresh Superbase project. I've already created this Superbase project, but if you don't have one yet, you can get one by heading to database.new. Once you have one, you can head over to storage and create a new bucket. I'm just gonna make this a public bucket because we won't be storing any sensitive data. All we're gonna do in this demo is, at least is just fancy code snippets. So I'm going to call this bucket whatever this workflow called it, social media images. So this is the bucket name here. We wanna take that, 
paste it in there and hit create. Now we have a empty Subaris bucket. And we can configure our S3 credentials from under here, configuration. So over to NAN, I'm just gonna go back to the S3 credential page and copy over all the credentials. So endpoint, we want to copy what we have here and then region, we want to copy that over as well. Access key ID and uh, secret access key is something we create from down here. So we're just gonna create a new access key pair. I'm just gonna take this access key ID and secret access key. Make sure not to expose your ac secret access key because otherwise um, anybody would be able to do anything with your storage bucket. So that's good. Okay, so we have all the credentials in and the bucket name should be correct. The ACL. Not sure what that is, we can probably delete that. Everything else should be fine except the file name. So we can upload it um, the way it is, but we need to give a file name. When this S3 upload action runs, it doesn't have much of an output. It just outputs whether um, the upload was successful or not. So true or false. It doesn't come with the file name. So what we can do is we can create a file name for this way early up here. And for this, I'm gonna use data transformation and edit field. Now, we don't need to edit any of the fields. We can just create a uh, static variable almost. Uh, so file name. And I will, this will be, I'm just gonna do something quick and dirty. I'm just gonna do now plus dot ping. So the output string looks something like this. It's the timestamp, the current timestamp dot ping, which works in this case, it's good enough for us. Uh, it'll create a file name and then I can reference that file name for edit fields. I think we have to yeah, execute the steps in order to fetch the value. All right, so now that we have all the values, we can go here and reference this file name in here, right here. Awesome. This should do it, I think. One thing I forgot to do is we also have to check this force path style. Honestly, I'm not sure what that is, but um, otherwise it wouldn't work. So hopefully this does it. Great. It successfully uploaded the image file. Let's go take a look within our super storage bucket and there it is. Nice example SQL snippet right there. Amazing, so far, so good. Now, again, we don't need this prepare database record action. We can just jump into inserting the data into our Superbase database. And it looks like this, in this particular instance, it didn't successfully transfer all the actions. But what we want to do is instead of insert, uh, it's called create, but we want to create a new row. And in order to fetch the table data, we need to create a new Superbase credential so that we can connect to this new Superbase database that I, that I just created. In order to get the credentials, we can get to project settings, data API, and the top Superbase URL is the host. And the service role secret is the secret keys down here. I'm just gonna hit copy and paste it right in there. And that's it, you can hit save. and make sure it's using the correct one. Now, we haven't created any tables yet, 
But let me go back and open the create table statement. I am just going to paste this statement to create the table. Open SQL Editor, paste it. I'm actually going to delete a few columns that I might not need. I am not going to need image file name because image uh, URL should do it. Tip category, sure, code snippet, generated at. Not sure if that. I'm just going to delete it. Status pending. We might need that for, you know, approval process in the future. Published at. Sure. I will leave it in. Um, I guess that, I guess that's it. Yeah, let's run it, create the table. And one thing we want to make sure we do when we create tables is that the role of all security is enabled. And we, since we run the SQL statement to create a table, uh, we need to explicitly enable rollable security on the table. So I'm just going to jump into the table editor and enable rollable security so that other users, other people, bad people cannot access this table. And just like that, we're good. The table is created. That's all we need in order to prep. Now, let's see. Let's Go back, reopen this, and there's the social media posts table. Now let's add each field one by one. The tweet text can be the tweet text right there, and so on and so forth. Um, image prompt right here. You get the idea. Let me come back to you once I'm done with all this. Okay, now I filled out all the columns except for image URL. And I wanted to talk a little bit about image URL. So image URL is something that we can kind of dynamically construct from the file name that we already have from previous steps, as well as our SuperEase credentials. Easiest way to see what an image URL looks like is go into one of the um, images, open it up, and click this Get URL button. Paste it in here as a value. It's going to look kind of like this. Uh, your subis URL slash storage slash v1 object public blah, 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 bucket name. And then here at the end, you have the file name. So you want to replace this with, with the file name that you had. So let's put it right in there. And just like that, you have dynamically constructed your image URL in there. We should be able to execute this step. And fingers crossed, there you go. So quick. Let's go check out our table editor. Hit refresh. And there you go. We have our tweet right there in our database. And let's double check the image URL is working correctly. So we can copy cell. And there you go, we have access to the image. So just like that, we have constructed this nice workflow that'll generate a nice engaging Twitter content and have it stored in our Superbeast database and storage bucket. But from here, there are a few ways you can expand it. You can maybe add a human in the loop, right? You can maybe create a web app that loads all these uh, AI generated content and have a human kind of approve these posts. And from there on, you can maybe automatically schedule them, autom automatically post them, do whatever you want to. But I hope this whole walkthrough of how to get started with NAN and how to use Superbase database and storage in your workflow was helpful to you. And I cannot wait to see what you build using Superbase and NAN.